I had the pleasure of sitting down with the Bishop Marvin Sapp. Mm-hmm. And we got to talking, and and I know, and you you're like Sean. I, I I am a student of '80s music. It really influenced me. And we got to talking about his beginnings with Commission mm-hmm. in the '80s, Fred Hammond, all of those guys, and how they were so edgy at the time, and they were kind of a, a cross between. They were the the, the R and B gospel. How how much of an influence did that group have on your life? Huge. Had to, because I'm listening to you. I'm like, I know he was listening to Commission. Bro, you know I was all in on Fred. Like, like, the, like those <laughs> are our guys, man. All of those, those songs, you know, coming up. Uh, oh man, now I'm having I'm having moments or whatever. But all of those guys, Commission, um, like I always, I was in a music group before I, long before I went to college and long before I got record deal, my very first music group was a Christian group called the Christian Stars of Life. And mm. it was like six or seven of us. We all had jerry curls and and suits. <laughs> and it was the craziest thing to ever see. But uh, we were learning that even in the church, it was like, okay, well, you know, outside the church, you got a, a Michael Jackson, but then there's also a, a Jermaine Jackson and then yep. there's a, 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 you know, so in it's our T-O group, is- we know the guy that does this part. And then we also looked at like the temptations. You know, this is the guy with the high voice. This is the guy that's got the bass. And so I can remember, you know, what I'm saying we had in our groups those different roles carved out and commissioned without question uh, was one of the voices that are so memorable. John P. Key, like the Clark sisters, all of that. Very, very huge influences on me. Interestingly enough, people don't give that group as much credit as they should because so many of the uh, R&B singers, R&B groups, soloists and groups that came out of the late 80s and 90s, they, they got the melodies and harmonies from that group. The thickness and the fullness of those vocal Harmonies. If you go back and you listen to uh, Christopher Williams, like, don't yep. wake me, I'm dreaming, all of that, you know, that tone, that tremor, that all of that was captured from commission. Absolutely. Okay, um, let's move this thing on a little bit. You are 6'8". Yes, sir. You ever play ball? I suck. Are you serious? I suck at basketball. One of the worst times in my life. One of the best times and worst times. I was, I can remember Prez sitting in my front, front of our house. My dad got a, a, a old piano that was sitting in the front of our house. When I said I wanted to learn how to play piano and I could literally sit there because my pops made me play for hours. I could look out my window and see kids down the block playing basketball. Uh huh. And I'm sitting on the piano crying mad because I'm sitting there and I can't go outside until I get two hours of piano playing in. Literally, probably one of the worst memories I can remember is when I finally got to Sarah High School. I got there in the 10th grade. It was like a 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th type of school. So most of the kids before me got there in the 9th grade. They were there like a year before me. So mm-hmm. I got there in the 10th grade. I come in with my Jerry curl. This is about the time everybody's doing the ball head freak thing back then. Everybody got the low seasons or ball head cuts or whatever. I come in with my Jerry curl in the 10th grade a year later, uh, six foot five named Jordan. (laughs) Right. So the six foot five Jordan shows up to the school and it's like, yo, we got joy. And this is at the heyday of, you know, Michael Jordan doing stuff. And now Jordan shows up to your high school, six foot five. Oh, man, they were sure I could ball. <laughs> Nothing, bro. Nothing. It was sad. It was embarrassing. Uh, and even, even though I'm a quick study, because I, I spent time to, to learn the game, I'm playing with guys that have been playing since exactly. four and five years old, you know, three years old dribbling basketball. So I can I, here's, here's the moment, Perez, I knew basketball was not for me. Here's, here's my defining moment. I'm in a game. Uh, in my 11th grade year, um, I think, uh, no, I was in the 10th grade year. I'm, I'm, I've advanced even throughout that year. We're in a game. I get a breakaway 
in the game. I take the lane and I go up and I get a slam dunk in the game. Bow. And the people in the crowd are like, ah, he should have reversed that. I was like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Nothing I do can be enough. Like for me, dunking in a game was like, oh my God, I dunked in an actual game. They're thinking, man, you, you should, as big as you are, you're supposed to reverse that. I was like, okay, this is not, I'm not going to excel at this, bro. Oh, man. Okay, so high school, you figure out, yo, everybody would expect me with my height and my size to be balling, but this ain't it for me. Do you turn your attention full on to your gift at that point, or is it later in your life where you stop seeing yourself as a kid who, I play the piano in church, I sing, but no, this is really my calling. This is This is my gift. Prez, I didn't know it was a gift. It was just what I did. I did it because oh. I was brought up and you play the piano and you play it for the church. So it wasn't like, oh, I'm gifted to do this. Like, that's just what I did. Like, even when I was all at high school, I never, those kids never like came to my church. It was a Catholic high school. So they weren't coming to the Baptist church in my hood. You know, the school was in Gardena, all guys Catholic school. So it was like my world of gospel music and my church and my family that was like belonged to me. And then I was like leased out to the school to go there and get my education and to be a part of that amazing group of guys that I came through there with. But it's great that you asked the, the question the way you did, because I do remember the moment when I realized I had a gift because I had been clowned. I've been ridiculed about not being able to ball. Uh, very embarrassing moments, you know, playing sports. Uh, wasn't even allowed to play my senior year because my pops was like, now your grades are dropping. And so you got to lock and load. And so the moment that it happened for me, Prez, that that, that defining moment, uh, it was at a high school talent show. I was a senior. And I remember um, it was in the gym. Uh, they had cleared all the basketball stuff. And you had all these parents and all these kids sitting up in the bleachers of Sarah High School gym. They wrote out a piano. I was one of the last people that that performed for this talent show. And I sat down to the piano and I started playing Lionel Richie's uh, Jesus is Love. And I did the father, doo -doo -doo -doo, help your children. It got mm -hmm. so quiet in that gym. And after I did that song, playing it and singing it on the piano, the roar and the eruption that came from those parents and those kids and my peers for the first time, like, it was like, it was like they were saying, oh, that's it. It's not basketball. It's not, it, oh, wow, that's it. That's him. And I remember sitting there on that piano. I don't know why I'm getting emotional right now, bro. Um, <laughs> I remember sitting there in that moment, hearing that and feeling that, and that was a moment it hit me and it was like, oh, maybe this is it right here. Maybe this, maybe this right here is my space. I've done it just because I'm a kid that was trained to do it, but I've never done it outside of Sunday morning at church. And now I'm doing it and there's a whole audience there that's erupting over it. Maybe this is, maybe this is a part of who I am. And that's when I realized that music was the gift that God gave to me, senior in high school. I, I'm so, so, so happy you broke that story down the way you did. Um, I want to take a moment for anybody who's listening to this because they really need to rewind that part, listen to it again, and listen to it again. And I'll tell you why. If you ask 90 to 95% of the people on planet Earth, what is it that you want to do with your life? What's your calling? What's your purpose? They will all tell you, no. I don't know. I don't know. What's your gift? I don't know. And they always overlook that thing that they just have been doing and have been bringing them joy. It hasn't been bringing them money. But in my spare time, when I'm by myself, when I'm with people, this is the thing that I do. 
but they never look at it as, as this is my gift. This is my purpose. This is what I should be putting all of my energy into. That's what God put me here to do. So I'm so happy you broke down that story because people overlook the obvious. They're looking at what society says is uh, uh, a career or, yeah. you know, what I have to get a degree. And, and no, sometimes it's a, most times it's as simple as the thing you do all day, every day without even thinking about it. The thing you do best that nobody can do but you. And the thing not only that you love to do, but the thing that God loves you to do. That thing well right said. there is, that's gold, man. That's gold. Not just well what said. I like to do, but the thing that I like to do that God likes me doing. <laughs> well said. I love it. Um, okay, so, so you have that epiphany moment. The, the, the clouds open up, the sun shines in. Oh my God, this, like, like I was never going to be in the NBA. This is it. You go on to college, um, Pepperdine, yes, if sir. I got this correct. That's correct. Let me ask you something. Kim Fields went to Pepperdine. Were, were you there when she was there? That's my homie right there. Get out of here. Yes, sir. We were in classes together. Uh, her brother uh, is a fraternity brother of mine. Like, she was a Kappa sweetheart. When I pledged, she was one of our sweethearts, bro. Stop lying. Kid you not. Okay, you, could you, you I, I see the brand. I'm, I'm looking, let, let's, let's, let's be clear. Let, let's get the brand up to, the, there we go. That's the, that's <laughs> and, that Kappa Psi. <laughs> yes, sir. All the, shout out to you all the pretty boy the, noobs out there. Yo, yo. <laughs> okay, you pledged in spring 89. Spring 89 lasted the divine. It, did you go through the old school way of pledging at that time or did they switch it around? I went through the old school way, bro. And and so let me give you, uh, 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 th this was at a period where, the, of course, there were cracking downs on hazing and things like that. And of course, cap Alpha Psi is a non-hazing fraternity. Uh, I came through <laughs> old school. Uh, I came through old school and... Uh, you know, let's let's just say I was I I'm honored that I was I got the the respect and the notoriety with the brothers that were brought in an old school way. And and I'm not saying it's always the best way. And I'm not saying that there aren't unhealthy things that every organization probably does traditionally that should not be done. Um, but um, I was I was brought in before a lot of the crackdowns and everything happened with with trying to make organizations more safer to enter. My my entry into Cap Alpha Psi was not safe. Can I say it that way? <laughs> okay, so, so and just so you know, um, I'm going to give you a pass because some of my best friends are, are Cappers. Uh, I'm from New York. We go a different way. Blue Fi. So, so let's just be clear. Okay, okay. I'm from okay. the East. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're handling your business. So I, I, I get you. I understand, you know. The crazy thing is you and I are sans. So, so you, we, you spring 89 or spring fall 89? 89? Okay, there we go. We're sans. Um, are you serious that, that Kim Fields was, was a Kappa sweetheart? Yes, sir. But did, did her brother pledge before you or after you? Her brother pledged before me and pledged me. Wow. Wow. What type of big brother was he? He was not kind. <laughs> he was not kind. I got introduced to a phone book by her brother because I forgot <laughs> to call him. Okay. I'm going to leave it at that. We leave it at that. We ain't going to go too deep. I'm leave it at it. that. <laughs> All right. Um, you graduate. What's your degree in? Organizational communication, minored in business. What was your plans upon graduating? Were you like, yo, I'm going to chase my career? Or did you just do what most people do? I'm going to use my degree, go out, get a job. Um, my plan was um, to use that degree in organizational communication. For those that don't know what that is, it's beyond communication, like before a camera or before like commentating or something like that. It's the study of how organizations work or, or how things become functional or dysfunctional. So it's the story of how if you have a president who's in the penthouse and you have the mailroom in the basement, 
what happens on those floors between the presidential suite and the basement and what happens if the presidential suite is somewhere in the middle on a side office where you can look down the hall and see your business associates in the centerpiece and then the mail room is maybe up a floor beneath that. It's this, the study of structure of systems and how to make them more functional and building company morale and stuff like that. Like that's what I studied. And my idea was I'm going to go to law school. I wanted to be a lawyer. Uh, I knew uh, a, a black professor, uh, uh, Dr. Bernie James, who was over the Pepperdine Law School at the time. I befriended uh, him and, and his wife and his family. And so my plan was, I'm going to go to law school uh, after graduation. And so I remember actually sitting with them. He was a big jazz music fan. He loved the trumpet. He played trumpet. And I remember sitting with him and uh, asking him, did he have any regrets in his life? He didn't say a regret, but he shared that he always wondered that if he had pursued music, would he have been excellent or really, really successful at doing that? And that kind of stuck with me because I was like, well, I've wondered what I could do musically as well before taking this pathway to law school. Uh, and maybe the window for being in the music business is a lot smaller than the window of going to law school. Like I'm 53 right now. If I wanted to go to law school, I can go to law school now. But that window of the music business is open and closed only for a brief amount of time for anybody that's interested in yep. that. So yep. I took at that time, before I go to law school, I need to take a shot at this. So I did land a job at a company after graduation called Williams Television Time in Santa Monica. I used to buy airtime for infomercials. I was very good at, at what I did and started moving up within the company. Uh, and at that same time, while I was doing that and preparing to go to law school, that's when I, I buckled down and said, you know, if I'm going to take a shot at getting into the music business, now is the time. 